Hey, hey, party people, it's Lycona de Chichi, and welcome to the easy peasy guide for Eden's Gate Descent Savage, better known as E2S. So before we start, each party member should take a cardinal direction as well as a diagonal position because a lot of the mechanics on this fight rely heavily on your positioning around the boss. Choose the best positioning for your group, and as you can see here, we have the marker placement set up as such. Just keep in mind that the group will stack at C, the tanks will go to A, and the healers will go to B. The Void Walker will test your positioning right off the bat by casting Doom Void Cleaver. This mechanic will hit each party member, and when it's done, it'll spawn an ad behind you that will slowly come back to the middle and then disappear when it reaches the boss. If two party members overlap each other during this mechanic, they will kill each other, so stick to your positionings around the boss. It's also a good idea here if you get mixed up or lost around the stage, just remember go to your default position and you'll be prepared for the next mechanic that comes out. Next up there'll be a party AoE, so just stack in the middle, and then she'll cast one of two mechanics, either Doom Void Slicer where the entire party dodges it by stacking underneath the boss, or Doom Void Guillotine, where the entire party has to stack on either side of her to avoid her laser line through the middle. In both cases, ads will spawn, so just dodge those ads accordingly. Also keep in mind that the direction the ad is facing is the way that it will travel when they spawn. At the same time, four people will get the giant AoEs around them, so spread them out. Next up, there's going to be a lot of different mechanics happening in succession, so let's go over them one at a time. So two mechanics come out here at the same time. First, the Void Walker will place down eight mini pink circles around the stage. In order to resolve this mechanic, each party member should take one pink circle and stand inside it. There's four on the inside and four on the outside, and they do correspond to your directional positions. So if you're north, then you stand in the north one. If you're northeast, you stand in the northeast one, etc. At the same time those pink circles come out, she'll cast Spell in Waiting, which basically means that the next spell that she casts, whatever that mechanic is, it's not going to go off quite yet. So you you always want to pay attention to yourself and your debuff counters. What always helped me with this fight, if I see that giant clock underneath her and the next mechanic comes out, I just kind of don't worry about it right now until a little bit later. During the pink puddles, one person will get the stack marker as you can see here, but don't worry about it right now because it's a spell in waiting stack marker, so we're going to have to resolve this a little bit later. Next up, she'll cast spell in waiting AoEs on five party members, spread out these AoEs in about 10 seconds. She'll then cast Spell in Waiting and put Shadow Eye on one person. As soon as the AoEs go off, everyone come in and stack behind the boss. The person with the stack marker stands with the party, while the person with the Shadow Eye stands slightly behind the party so that the party can keep hitting the boss while dodging the Shadow Eye mechanic. Right before the stack and the Shadow Eye mechanics go off, two people will get Prey Markers. These two folks should leave the party stack and stay out of its AoE range on either side of the boss. Once all of that resolves, get ready for the next mechanic. Next up, she'll cast Shadow Flame, which are the Tank Busters. After that, she'll cast Entropy, which is a party-wide AoE. As soon as the pretty pink AoE comes out, a hand will spawn on either side of the stage with a red tether. The party just needs to go to the opposite side of the stage in order to dodge this giant red AoE. Right after that, she'll cast Doom Void Guillotine, followed by Doom Void Slicer. So you first want to dodge to the sides, avoid the adds, and then dodge underneath her. As soon as the slicer finishes, another giant hand will pop out on one side of the stage with a purple tether. In order to safely dodge this, you have to run to the side of the stage that the hand is at, because there will be a knockback from that side of the stage. Because the ads are coming out at the same time and it's really chaotic at this moment, I suggest that you use your anti-knockbacks for this mechanic. Right after that, you want to get back into your party positions because she'll cast Doom Void Cleaver, followed by Shadow Flame, which is the Tank Buster, and then Entropy, which is the raid-wide AoE. Next up, she'll cast a lot of mechanics in succession. So rather than going over each one individually, I'm going to just describe the mechanical order and how our group handles it. First, two people will get prey. Ignore them for now. Spread out these flares immediately, tanks to A, healers to B, and party on C. Once the flares resolve, one person will get Shadow Eye, and the individual pink puddles will come out on the ground. Now, the two people with prey markers don't go into your pink puddle just yet. The preys will go off moments before you need to stand in your puddle. The healers will need to top you up before you step into your puddle, so be patient here. At the same time, the person with Shadow Eye will be standing in their puddle, so you have to avoid looking in their direction. What's helped me with avoiding the Shadow Eye mechanic here is that when the flowers from the puddles come down to the stage, that's the exact time that the eye mechanic goes off, so you don't have to worry about looking at that person's timer. When you see those flowers coming down, just turn your character away from the person with the eye, or face towards the outside of the stage, 
and you'll dodge it every time. Shadow Flame will come out once again, followed by Entropy. Now, if you remember back in the Sophia days, you've seen this mechanic before. A set of white and black rings will come out, and you need to stack on top of your partner. The black rings will come out on the DPS, while the white rings will come out on the tanks and healers, so you can plan your partner accordingly. Just before the rings resolve on your partner, Doom Void Cleaver will come out, so you'll have to immediately head back to your positions. Avoid the adds here, but follow them towards the boss. One person will get the stack AoE marker, which must be shared with the party under the boss. Next up, it'll be one of two mechanics, either the stack underneath her or the stack on the sides, which is Slicer or Guillotine. Next, she'll cast another Shadow Flame, followed by another Entropy. We get it, Voidwalker. You're going to do this throughout the entirety of the fight. Again, she'll cast a lot of mechanics in succession, so let's go over the mechanical order and how we handle it. First, ignore these flares and look for the hand with the tether on the side of the stage. It can either be a red or a purple tether, so be on the lookout. If you remember, the red tether goes to the opposite side of the stage, while the purple tether is a knockback, so stand close. One person will get a stack marker, ignore this for now. New flares will come out, which I'll call second flares, ignore these as well. The people who got the first flares need to spread out at this point. Tanks to A, healers to B, and the rest of the party at C. Immediately after the first flares go off, the party needs to stack on C to share the stack damage. In a little bit, two people will get Shadow Eye. The people with the second flares need to spread out to their A, B, and C markers. We have the people with the Shadow Eye stand at C, but they're at the very edges of the stage behind the entire party. Make sure that the people with the Shadow Eye look away from each other. The second flares and the eyes will all go off at the same time. Right before the eyes and the flares go off, she'll cast three AoEs on people which can be ignored during this part. But as soon as the second flares go off, as well as the eyes, those people with the AoEs will need to spread out. Immediately after and at the same time, she'll put down the pink puddles on the ground, as well as the white and black rings will appear on everyone. Resolve the black and white rings first with your partner, and then step into your pink puddle. Right after the pink puddles resolve, you want to get back into your positions for Doom Void Cleaver. Voidwalker will then cast Shadow Flame, and then she'll cast Quietus, which is a raid-wide AoE. And at this point, she'll cast one of two mechanics. Each mechanic, you'll have to execute three types of dodges. Don't worry, you've seen these mechanics before, but we're just going to do them one right after the other. First one is called Cycle of Chaos. For this one, you dodge to the sides first, then underneath the boss, and then go to your positions. The other one is called Cycle of Retribution. You dodge this by going underneath the boss first, then to your positions, and then dodge out to the side. Keep in mind that when you're dodging both of these mechanics, there's going to be a hell of a lot of adds that come out on stage, so just make sure you dodge them accordingly. Next up, she'll cast another Quietus, which is just another raid-wide AoE, followed by either Cycle of Chaos or Cycle of Retribution. After that, if you've dodged all the mechanics, she'll cast Quietus again in multiple successions for the Enrage. And if your DPS was high enough, congratulations, you've just completed E2S, or Eden Savage, The Descent. I personally like to call this fight passive aggressive, because on the one hand, you have to dodge these mechanics really quick and instantaneously, but at the same time, she casts that spell in waiting on everyone, and you have to just be a little bit patient. So it's a very cool blend of being action oriented and fast paced, while at the same time, you have to wait and hold your ground. Stay calm. Thank you all so much for enjoying this guide. Keep in mind that as these fights continue, as more guides come up, there's going to be different ways of doing things. There's going to be different meta. Don't forget to check out the links below because I've tried to gather as many guides and as many clear videos and as many things as I can to give you enough resources in order to get this fight down and get on to Leviathan. If you have any ideas or any strategies that could help out everyone, please leave them in the comments below. And thank you guys for hanging out and enjoying this guide and hopefully you'll get your clears and you'll be happy, you'll be able to challenge Leviathan, and uh, I just want it to be fun for you. So until next time, keep on adventuring.